Hello, so you've got a new learning curve too. In this short video I'll show you how to set it up and I'll give you a taste of the vast range of applications that all the family can use. So, what have we got? Well, first of all there's the computer and keyboard. There's this gadget which is called a mouse and of course the monitor. And that's all the hardware. Then there's the welcome guide which explains all about running your BBC A3000 and finally there's the software itself, the programs. But first of all, let's get the machinery up and running. It's impossible to plug any item into the wrong socket because each plug is different from the rest, and so of course they can only be plugged into the right hole. First of all, take the computer and plug in the mouse. That goes in underneath the computer, like so. Fine, that's the mouse, and next comes the monitor. Now this one is a colour monitor. That plugs in round the back here, in this socket, marked analog RGB. Plug it in, and you will need a small screwdriver here just to tighten these screws to ensure a really good fit. Right, that's firm. Now, if you've got a monitor stand like this one, it simply slides onto the back of the computer and you'll find that that's plenty strong enough to support your monitor. And there, that's all there is to it. Simply plug in and switch on. Now, the first thing you'll see is the BBC A3000 desktop. If you don't see this, then check that all your leads are properly connected. So let's have a look at this desktop screen. This is the work area with a pointer which is controlled by the mouse. Now, as I move the mouse, you'll see the pointer moves with it. And at the bottom of the screen here is this light grey bar. The symbols on the bar are called icons, and they represent different functions which allow you to control the computer. Well, that's the computer, the hardware. But it's the software, the programs, which turn it into a word processor, a sophisticated art and graphics tool, or even a music synthesizer. Programs are computer instructions, and they come on these things, floppy disks. Actually, they're not floppy at all, and somebody's got a funny idea of what a disk looks like. However, the name goes back into the mists of computer history, and we're stuck with it. The way your computer works is that it takes instructions off these magnetic disks in much the same way that music is replayed from a cassette. The computer then stores the information in its temporary memory. It's these instructions which turn the computer into a word processor, a draw and paint device, or a musical instrument. When you've written your letter or created your drawing or composed your symphony, you'll want to save it. You give it a name and store it on another floppy disk. It's then preserved for whenever you next need it, whether it's tomorrow or next year. Always remember to save your work onto disk. This is vital because the computer's temporary memory only lasts as long as the computer is switched on. If you haven't saved it and you switch off the computer, well, bang goes all your hard work. The disks that come with the learning curve already contain programs. These are master disks and you must look after them. If you damage them or accidentally erase part of a program, well, you just have to buy some more. This tab can be moved up and down. Now, in this position, the disk is right protected. That's computer jargon, meaning that you can't save files onto it. You can only read what's already there. That way, you won't accidentally erase the valuable software. So, always leave the right protect tab in the safe position like that on your master disks. OK, now we're ready to load a program. First, you'll need to find the applications disk number one, like this, and slot it into the disk drive, which is here on the right of the computer. Now, be careful that the disk is the right way up. Label goes on top. In it goes. Now, you tell the computer what to do by using the mouse. The mouse moves that pointer to the action that you require. Now, this may seem a little bit tricky at first, but believe me, you soon get the hang of it. The buttons on the mouse carry out different functions. The one on the left selects an item. The one in the middle here displays menus, lists of options. Now remember, middle for menus. Now to tell the computer to read that floppy disk, click the select button with the mouse pointer on the disk drive icon down there. Click it once, a slight pause. And there, the screen displays the disk's contents, the directory.
lots of applications, each one represented by an icon. Now, one of the most useful is this one here, Help. To load it, simply move the mouse pointer up to that icon and double-click the Select button. Now, a double-click is two clicks in rapid succession, like this. If you look at the icon bar, you'll see that a replica Help icon has appeared. There it is. Now that help is loaded, I can find out about anything on the screen that I don't understand simply by pointing to it. For example, what's this down here? Move the pointer there, and it tells me this is floppy disk drive zero icon, and there's some more information about it. When you've finished with help, simply click on the small cross up here, and away it goes. Well, now let's try something else. Draw here is what's called a graphics application. As before, I double-click to load it. And to tell me it's loaded, there's a replica icon on the icon bar. One click on that, and it opens a window, giving you a clean page to draw on. Now, down the left are nine shapes. There's circles, lines, rectangles, and so on, all part of the graphics toolbox. OK, now it's your turn. Stop the video here and have a go for yourself. Actually, these graphics you'll find on one of the discs. That's just to get you started. If you make a mistake, though, don't worry. You can always close the window you're working on, like that, and open up a clean one, like so. I'll see you soon, but don't get too engrossed in the computer, will you? There's still a lot more to show you. Oh! Getting too clever, aren't you? <laughs> oh, there you are. I thought you'd be longer than you said. It's difficult to stop once you've started, isn't it? Well, while you've been away, Thomas has been rummaging through the applications discs, and he's found this, which is called Lander. And it's a great deal more difficult than it looks. OK, so it's a game, and where's the education in that, you might say? Well, it is teaching two things. Firstly, it's developing hand-eye coordination. And secondly, it's improving his mouse handling skills. Maestro develops other skills, giving you the ability to create music very quickly. And as Abby has found, you can get very passable tunes out of Maestro straight away. And that's very encouraging for beginners. It's not like scratching away at a violin for weeks with slow, painful progress. Of course, the resources of the Learning Curve package provide much more than this. There's a very powerful word processor, First Word Plus. You'll find you'll be using this for letter writing, project, reports, anything, in fact, which involves text. First Word Plus has all the features required to write documents, alter them, check the spelling, change the layout, even add illustrations. No longer is there a need for ugly crossings out when a better phrase or word comes to mind. And your BBC A3000 has another exceptionally useful feature. If you load in the PC emulator discs, now the computer has been transformed into a PC-compatible machine, and you'll be able to run Lotus 123 and other business software in just the same way as you do at work. Now, that's ideal for completing projects over the weekend or in the evening, and the disk that you take back to work will run on your office PC. The program I've left until last is this one, Genesis, and it's like no other. It allows you to combine text, graphics, animation and music into an integrated form with paths linking facts and concepts. You create the links and you assemble the model. It's a bit difficult to describe, but here's an example to show you how it works. We can start with something like, say, a map of Europe, drawn with a graphics package like Draw. Well, I can find out a bit more about any of these countries just by clicking on the one we want. So, uh, Thomas, if you click there, we'll find out about France. We have some information, and even, you notice, a bit of animation. And there's sound, too. Let's hear the national anthem. And, of course, we can find out a bit more about Paris. There we are. And by clicking on the flag, 
Let's see what happens. Ah, now we're off into a whole new area, flags of Europe. But don't make the mistake of thinking that this is just a geography program. It's versatile enough to use for all kinds of purposes. A database, an address book, famous composers, an interactive story to involve the youngsters. Well, that really has been a lightning tour of your BBC A3000. This computer is one of the most sophisticated available. The learning curve's range of advanced software has been carefully selected to meet the educational needs of today's children now and in the future. It's been developed in close collaboration with the country's leading educationalists to provide a stimulating environment to stretch the minds and the creative thoughts of all who use it. Whether it's a four-year-old starting to express his thoughts and ideas, an eight-year-old polishing her poetry, a 12-year-old pulling together the linked elements of a project. A 15-year-old experimenting with music. An 18-year-old studying for A-levels or college. Or parents running business software at home. The learning curve from Acorn is the computer for the whole family. A computer solution for today and the future.